Come on in, Mrs. Odette. Hi, honey. Hi, Mrs. Odette. I thought I'd just drop over and see what you were doing, but your father said you shouldn't. Mrs. Odette, I've told you, I'm not disobeying my father anymore. You're not really serious. If you're going to be obedient, what are we going to do for kicks around here? Well, I'm going to get my kicks another way, like this, what I'm doing right now. I don't get it. Dad's birthday is two weeks from now, and I'm trying to find just one darn thing he doesn't have. Oh, I see. Uh, gifts are a problem for a man like your father. Well, I may as well put this stuff back in the closet. I'll give you a hand. All right. Uh, Margie, not like that. You got to be careful when you handle firearms. Okay, you put it away. Now, I'm going to give you a little lesson. No gun is ever empty, not even empty guns. There's no telling when a shell might get jammed inside. Okay, teacher, I've learned my lesson. I'm going to show you how a terrible accident might happen. Mrs. Odette, don't load it. I'm not going to shoot. I just want to demonstrate my point. Mrs. Odette, be careful. Now, for the lesson. The main thing to watch out for is right here. Now, this is the trigger. You've got to be careful not to... You were saying? Let that be a lesson to you. The idea of an intelligent girl like you allowing an 82-year-old woman to handle a loaded gun. I'll get the dustpan and clean up the broken plaster. And just where do you think you're going? I'm going to see Margie, and as of right now, I'm going to see her whenever I want to see her. And if you don't like it, you can lump it. Say that again. I don't know how I said it the first time. Bye, Mr. Albright. Maggie, I'm sorry. I know it was really my fault. I guess I just come from a long line of butt passers. <laughs> oh, I'm just wondering what my father will say. Margie! I'm not afraid to face him, but I just will be moving when I do here. Mrs. Odette, how are you? I have only one thing to say. I shot in self-defense. There, now, that looks better. Well, Dad, home early, huh? Why did you move my dresser? Oh, the way I figure, furniture can have a lot to do with people's happiness. And believe me, Dad will both be a lot happier with it here. How are things at the office? Oh, everything's fine. Honey, I know what you mean about furniture, but I don't think I'd feel quite comfortable with it there. Well, Dad, think of me. Honest, I feel real comfortable with it here. <laughs> you little nut. Okay, we'll leave it there. Hmm, I smell something like gunpowder. Don't be silly. You don't smell at all like gunpowder. Wait a second. I shot in self-defense. Your baby picture. What's happened to it? I've cherished this since you were three years old. I thought you hardly ever looked at it. Margie, I'd rather have lost my right arm than... What did Mrs. Odette mean when she said... That is gunpowder. I am going to have a look behind this. I'll help you. There, now, you've got to admit it looks a lot better in the new place. Well, heave ho and back we go. What are you hiding? Margie, why have you got your back to the wall like that? Well... When your back itches, there's nothing like a good wall to scratch it on. That's what I always say. Margie, you're hiding something. But don't be silly. No, sir, there's nothing like a wall. Now, take a fork. If you've got an itch up real high, you can reach it with a fork. But if you've got an itch way down, there's nothing like a wall. Now, if they'd make a fork that had a handle about three feet long, well, you could do away with walls altogether. Just imagine that, Dad. Imagine how that would change literature. Four forks and a ceiling. By golly, if they'd make a fork that... I don't think you're buying this at all. Step aside. Okay, let's have it. What happened? 
Well, I had some of your things out, and Mrs. Odette's came over, and... What did you have my guns out for? What were you doing? Well, I... Oh, please, Dad, don't ask me to tell you that. Couldn't we just laugh the whole thing off? I can point to it and say, man, dig that crazy new ventilator. <laughs> well, whenever you and Mrs. Odette's get together, a hole in the wall is getting off easy, I guess. But... but this... Every time I looked at this little picture, I didn't just see you. I saw your mother, too. Golly, Dad, it was an accident. I'm sorry. I didn't know you loved it so much. How could you? You've never been in here when I've said goodnight to it. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, forget it, baby. It's still beautiful to me. Maybe someday we'll have you painted again. I'm sure a fine artist will see the same things in you that this one did. Now then, what the heck happened? Dad, you've just given me the most wonderful idea. Stop trying to change the subject. I want to know what happened. Don't you worry about a thing. Everything's going to be just perfect, and I'll tell you all about it in two weeks from now. Self-defense? Mrs. Odette? What's the matter, dear? I think I've got it. Really? I'm not surprised, though. I've heard it's going around. I'll get you an aspirin. I mean Dad's birthday present. I know just what he wants. Oh, really? What is it? An oil painting of me. Only we've got to find a really terrific artist. You know, the kind who can paint what's inside you. You mean your father wants a picture of your inside? Mrs. Odette, be serious. This is important. Now, where am I going to find an artist? A really good one who can paint me in the next two weeks. There's an artist named Pierre Duval. Does wonderful portraits. He painted Richard, and it was so lifelike, you could almost hear the painting wondering when Auntie was going to kick off. Sounds good. How much does he charge? Only $1,500. $1,500? On my allowance? Any good artist will cost you that much or more. Mrs. Odette, this is awfully important to me. Would you lend me $1,500? Margie, I'd like to, but I'm already overdrawn at the bank. Well, I can't stand you looking like that. So, well, if it'll make you happy, I'll get it for you somewhere. Oh, Mrs. Odette, you're wonderful. And I'll pay you back, honest, as soon as Dad's birthday's over. But remember, it's got to be a surprise. You mustn't talk about it, okay? Okay. Oh, thanks a million. <laughs> Bye, dear. Bye. What kind of a story can I make up to get a quick fifteen hundred dollars? Absolutely and positively no. If your banker won't advance the money out of your trust fund, I'm certainly not going to sell any of your stocks. But, Mr. Honeywell, I've explained. It's not for me. It's for this poor girl. This poor child. She needs the money desperately. It's a dreadful emergency. I'm sorry, Mrs. Odets, but the answer is still no. Uh, just a second. Oh, Mr. Albert. How much do you need, Mrs. Odets? Why, uh, $1,500. What are you doing? Uh, please, Mr. Honeywell, just a second. Just a personal loan. Oh, thank you, Mr. Albert. Thank you. Are you out of your mind loaning that irresponsible old lady? Don't you understand? She was talking about Margie. Margie? Well, who else? Margie's gotten herself in some kind of a jam, and just like she always does, Mrs. Odette's is trying to help her out. That's the reason she wouldn't tell me the girl's name when I asked her. Why, this sounds serious. Fifteen hundred dollars. Must be something she didn't want me to know. She'd have come to me for the money. I'm sorry, my boy. If anything I can do, let me know. Oh, thank you, Mr. Honeywell. I know. I know a trick that always works, but I want Margie to tell me something that she doesn't think she should tell her old pappy. I'll find out all about it tonight. Margie! Come on in, Dad. I couldn't sleep, so I came over to find out if you had anything good to read. Here, take this. I'm ready to buzz off. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh honey. Hmm? Margie, you know I've always tried to be both mother and father to you. You've been wonderful, Dad. 
You remember that little game we always play when you have a problem that you can't tell your father? You mean when you become mom instead of pop? Let's pretend I'm mom now. And rest assured, anything you tell your mom, your pappy will never find out. Okay? But I haven't got any problems. Remember, honey, I'm your mom. Now come, tell me what's wrong. Seems like Freddie Wilson came to see me yesterday afternoon, but Pappy wouldn't let him in. I'll give your Pappy a medal. I thought you were Mom. She never sides with Dad. I'm sorry, but honey, you've got a bigger problem than that. Now tell me what's really troubling you. Cross my heart, everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Mrs. Odets, I appreciate your bringing your friend to me, but there are many ahead of Miss Albright. Oh, please, Mr. Duval. Mademoiselle Albright, if you doubt my word, you go and try any good artist. You will have to have an appointment weeks in advance. But her father's birthday is only two weeks away. Can't you see my problem? You have a problem? I also have a problem. Well, what is it? Maybe I can help you with your problem, and you can pay me back by helping me with mine. Mademoiselle Albright, if you help me with this, I will start painting you tomorrow. From an old school friend, Jacques. He arrived the day after tomorrow from Paris, en route to California. What's the problem? Ever since I know Jacques, he always boasts how he is constantly pursued by beautiful women. And so, what does Big Marc Duval do when I arrive in this country? I write a letter to Jacques telling him that although I am in my middle fifties, a young, beautiful American girl is crazy about me and throws herself at my feet. And now when Jacques arrives, he will see me as I really am. A fat old artist who shoots the balloni. <laughs> it may seem unimportant to you that this Jack is what you Americans call a big blowhard. And now he has one big glass left at me. <laughs> you may try someone else, ladies. Uh, you know, there are some very good amateur artists in the village. But I don't want an amateur. I want this to be the best birthday present my father's ever had. I'm sorry, Miss Albright. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, please, Pierre, say that you love me. If you leave me, I'll die, die, die. How's that for having your feet thrown at? After a trailer like that, I sure got to see the picture. You mean you will do this for me in front of Jacques? For my father's birthday, I'll make Jacques admire you for the rest of his life. Oh, Mademoiselle Albright! <laughs> Tired? No, but maybe it'd be better if I got home by midnight. You see, my father thinks I'm out with Freddie Wilson. Oh, I understand. Well, I believe we've done enough for the first sitting. May I look? Well, of course. Oh, my father will love it. Oh, I'm sure he will. Now, remember, Jacques will be here tomorrow night. You will come at eight sharp as the American girl who's mad about old Pierre, yes? You old lady killer, you. <laughs> It's none of my business, but I wouldn't go busting in old Mr. Albright this time of night. Charlie, it's taken me all evening to get my courage up. I'm not gonna chicken out now. But it's almost 12 o'clock. But don't you see, Charlie, I've gotta do it. I've gotta prove to Margie that I can stand up to her father. Tonight I'm gonna find out whether I'm a man or a mouse. I don't wanna talk to you. Get in there. Well, I guess that sells the mouse question. Wait a minute. Where's Margie? Margie? Isn't she inside? Listen, she went out with you tonight and she hasn't come back yet, and I want to know where you left her. I haven't seen Margie for almost a week. Honest, Mr. Albright. But she said she had a date with you, and she's been out since 6.30. Freddy, Freddy, something must be wrong. Margie never lied to me before. And then, and then there's that $1,500, too. Oh, Freddy, our little Margie must be in some kind of trouble. Come on in, lad. Come on in and talk to your old pal, Vern. But, but why should she lie to me? Why? Well, call me tomorrow, Freddy, and I'll, I'll let you know if I learn anything. I'll do anything I can, Mr. Albright. Oh, don't call me Mr. Albright. Call me Vern, lad. Okay. 
Vern. Well, good night, lad. Good night, Vern. Didn't you get my message not to dare come here tonight? No, I haven't been home all day. Okay, but listen and listen closely. I'm doing something to make my father happy, and he can't find out about it. So you've got to help me now like you've never helped me before. Margie? Well? Oh, you waited up for me, huh? Margie, I'm going to ask you something, and I want you to tell me the truth. Where have you been? Where have I been? Well, you know where I've been. I've been out with Freddie. Baby, you've never lied to me before. Now, you've got to tell me, where have you been? Dad, what are you talking about? Freddy, what are you doing? Hanging up your coat. Hi, Mr. Albright. Hope I didn't keep her out too late. Now, now, wait a minute. What are you two up to? Dad, what are you talking about? You know darn well what I'm talking about. Freddy, you were here not more than five minutes ago, and you said she hadn't been out with you. Mr. Albright, have you been drinking? Now, listen, you. Dad. Margie, you better call a doctor. Something's happened to him. Dad, Dad, please sit down. You'll be all right in a little while. You, you mean I, you mean I dreamt it all? Now, wait a minute, Freddy. You were here a little while ago. Don't you remember when I, when I clipped you on the chin? Oh, it must be some sort of a wishful thinking phobia. <laughs> Mr. Honeywell, what am I going to do? This thing has me half crazy. Now, now, take it easy, Vern. We'll get to the bottom of this. You said Margie's going to take Mrs. Odette's to the theater tonight, right? That's what she said. Okay, then there's only one thing to do. We'll follow her. Oh, but I don't like to follow Margie. I like to trust her. Did she lie to you or not? Well, it seems that way. All right. Now, I know that girl darn near as well as you do. And if she's in a jam and you won't stoop to underhanded means to help her, I will. Oh, Mr. Honeywell, you're okay. Never had a child of my own. Always kind of feel like Margie's, well, you know. And if anybody's pulled a fast one on her, why, I'll... Tonight, we follow her. Come on. Tell me more about this girl, Pierre. In your letters, you say she bothers you almost constantly, eh? Oh, she's crazy for me. Oh, <laughs> you will see. She always comes about this time. Oh, nous verrons. <laughs> No, not you again, Margaret. Oh, Pierre, please, just let me talk to you. Oh, don't slam the door in my face again. Please, I cannot see you anymore, Margaret. So many women are crazy about me that I cannot spare you any more time. Uh, please, go away. But, Pierre, my darling, just spare me one minute. I love you, Pierre, I love you. Ooh, la, la. Oh, please, please don't send me away. Margaret, this is final. I cannot see you anymore. Go away, I tell you goodbye. <gasps> you are the lady killer. Oh, it's nothing, nothing at all. Just an everyday occurrence. No man has been treat my little girl like that. I'll break that guy's neck. Mr. Honeywell, I demand the privilege. Would you get it? Avec plaisir. Yes. Mon Dieu. Jacques. Jacques, what happened? I don't know. I simply said to my most cordial tone, yes. And a very distinguished gentleman standing there hit me. Oh. Mr. Honeywell, I think I know the answer. You do? It's all my fault. What do you mean? Well, you know how I picked on every fellow that Margie's ever had, gone out of my way to find fault with them, especially Freddie Wilson. So now, now she's starved for romance. She gets this insane crush on an older man, probably because she thinks I'd accept a man who's made his mark in the world. All right, you've got to do something. All right, suppose I change everything. Suppose I give Margie what I think she really wants. What are you talking about?
surprise. Dad! Freddy! Honey, I'm a changed man. He sure is. And have we got a surprise for you. And I mean a real surprise. Baby, I've been doing a lot of thinking, and I know how wrong I've been in keeping you and Freddy apart. And now I'm going to make it all up to you. We're going to get married tomorrow. We are? Your dad's driving us to Maryland himself. It's all set. It is? Isn't it wonderful? And, Fred, you better run along and get some sleep. It's a long drive to Elkton, son. <laughs> okay, Dad. Oh, honey, I'm so happy for you. And I'm glad I realized the error of my ways before it was too late. But, but Dad, I never said I wanted to marry Freddy. Of course you didn't. And why? Because you knew how I felt about Freddy. But now everything is going to be swell. Tomorrow we drive to Maryland, and, and then Mrs. Freddy Wilson, and everything will be fine. Oh, good night, dear. Holy mackerel! Come in, honey. What is it, dear? I'm sure glad Dad isn't here. Huh? Oh. Oh, you wanted to have a word with Mom. Could I, Mom? And he promised Dad will never know? Yes, dear. What is it? Well, Mom, Dad's put me in an awful spot. He's cooked up a wedding between me and Freddie Wilson, and I don't want to marry Freddie or anybody yet. You don't? No. But, honey, your dad told me that you'd fallen in love with an older man by the name of Pierre. In fact, he overheard you pouring out your heart to him tonight. And dad thinks that you'd be much better off married to Freddy. Double holy mackerel. Now it makes sense. Listen, Mom, don't miss a word. And remember, dad mustn't know. Two weeks from now is dad's birthday, and I want to surprise him with a portrait of myself to make up for the little one Mrs. Odette shot. So I'm having one painted by Pierre Duval. And he wanted me to pretend to be in love with him tonight to fool this friend of his who was inside. Any questions, Mom? Just one. Is this painting going to cost $1,500? That's right. Triple holy mackerel. But, Mom... Yes? I wanted so much to surprise Dad. Do you think he'll still be surprised when I give him the painting? I'll guarantee you this. He'll be the happiest father in the world. Oh, Mom. <laughs> Last call for breakfast. Be right with you, honey. Margie, Dad, I'm here. Freddy. We forgot all about him. Oh, Dad, I hate to hurt his feelings. What will I tell him? I've got it. Do you remember what you two did to me the other night? Well, leave everything to me. Well, I'm all set. You almost ready, Vern? Vern? Mr. Albright to you. But Vern, uh, I mean, Mr. Albright, you asked me to call you Vern? Are you crazy or... Wilson, have you been drinking? Just coffee and orange juice. What is all this? What do you mean by coming over here before breakfast with all this luggage yet? But don't you remember, Dad, uh, Mr. Albright? You're going to drive Margie and me to Maryland. We're going to get married. Well, you've got to remember you arranged the whole thing when I was here last night. A mind like his. It had to snap sooner or later. Freddy, you'd better go home. You need a good long rest. But Margie... You heard what she said. Go home! Margie, I was here last night, wasn't I? He, he called me lad. We were going to elope, weren't we? Go home, Freddy. This place confuses me. It confuses me. <laughs> 